I'm not happy right now. I said, scientist costume, not mad scientist costume. And what kind of mad scientist costume is this anyway? These are not like cool goggles. These are swimming things. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Um, our entire costume department, all of them are gonna be fired. Uh, we are here to read, why do we want a scientist? Because we're reading one of the greatest scientists of all time today. We are doing story time. I am Marie Curie, one of the great ones. And my name is Brad Meltzer. Welcome to Storytime with Brad. And you are going to really, really like this one. This is a good one. Um, Marie Curie is one of the greatest scientists who ever lived. I'm going to tell you all about her as I, let me just go through. We have, uh, there. no, um, this is, by the way, look at this. This is a, an ornament, an Xavier Riddle Christmas ornament with me on it, with Brad on it. That seems worth it. Um, you know, the goggles, Legion flight ring. By the way, if you get this reference, your parents and I are nerd friends. Uh, here it is. I got it finally here. I am Marie Curie. Ta-da! That was acting. Ta-da! My name is Brad Meltzer. Um, this book is written by me, Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Chris Eliopoulos, the amazing artist. And this is the story of Marie Curie. And you have seen her on Xavier Riddle 2 in the Secret Museum. You've seen our episode, I am Marie Curie. This is it. I am Marie Curie. Establishing shot. I am Marie Curie. When I was four years old in Poland, this was one of my favorite treasures, my dad's glass cabinet filled with scientific instruments. I used to stare at it wondering about each item. So this is a physics apparatus, physics apparatus. I didn't know what the words meant, but I'd never forget them. As a science teacher, my dad needed these tools, but the Russian government soon shut down laboratory classes in our schools. They didn't want Polish kids to learn about science. They thought education would be dangerous, that it would make us powerful. They were right. I really liked learning. One day when my older sister was struggling to read, I picked up her book and read the first sentence easily. From the looks on everyone's faces, I thought I'd made a mistake. Back then, men didn't think girls could be good students, and they certainly didn't think we could be scientists. So boys were always trying to challenge me. Okay, I'm gonna read you this poem. If you're so smart, you should be able to write the whole thing from memory. You ready? I guess so. He says, you think you should be able to do it? Not a chance. How's this? Whoa, I don't believe it. She didn't miss a word. Very curious, smart, right? From the very start, there was one person who always believed in me, my dad. When my mom got sick, he took care of us as kids. Since he was a teacher, even if we were just taking a walk, he'd give us new scientific lessons. See that sunset, Maya? He used to call it Maya. It looks like the sun's moving, but it's really the earth that's spinning. He said back then we didn't have phones, TVs, or computers, so our Saturday nights were spent with dad, sharing one of the most powerful things of all. Just what we're sharing right now, books. He read us classics like David Copperfield and one of my favorites, A Tale of Two Cities. Growing up, life was hard. My mom and one of my sisters passed away. My father wasn't allowed to teach the subject he loved. We didn't have much money. To escape the hard times, I would read, I would draw, and I would dance. One night, I danced so long, I completely wore out my shoes. It's really did, true. At 15, I graduated from high school early. I won the gold medal for being the first in my class. By 16, I knew I wanted to make an impact on this world. I even knew how. I want to be a scientist. Someday, I want to discover something no one has ever found before. There was only one problem. Where I lived, the university didn't accept women. Sorry, no girls allowed. <gasps> Boys only? That's not fair. Not so cool fact. Things were really different in 1884. <sighs> they wouldn't let me in, but I had my own ideas. I will follow my dream no matter what. All right, that's why we love Marie Curie. Watch this. Lucky for me, someone started a secret college where they taught women subjects that no one else would teach us. It was called the Flying University. Coolest name, right? It didn't really fly, but it had over a thousand women and it was magical and powerful. Look at all the books. The equipment, the math equations. They taught her all about science there. Eventually, my sister and I had a plan. We would save enough money and go to the Sorbonne in France, one of the most famous universities in the world. But we didn't have enough money for both of us to go. So you go first, she said to her sister, I'll follow. You sure? Don't worry, I'll never stop learning. Every day, I was so determined to become a scientist, I'd wake up at 6 a.m. and read books in every different language on physics and anatomy. Then I'd do the math problems my dad would send me to solve. Right, he'd give her all these problems to me. This is my favorite. By the time I was 18, I was doing my own experiments and drawing my own conclusions. 
I also learned one of the most valuable lessons of all. You should never accept everything as it is. Life, like science, can always be made better. This is her first laboratory run by her cousin. I do chemistry and physics experiments here. Watch this. Poof. Watch this one, though. Poof. Another? Poof. Another? Poof. This is the one. Ta-da! I had lots of accidents and failures. Making change is never easy. It takes hard work. Finally, when I was 23, my dream came true. I became a student at the Sorbonne. I would dedicate my life to science. I felt like a new person with new power. When I got there, I even signed the registration book differently. They called me by my new name, Marie. She changed her name. That's how she became Marie Curie. Like I said, making change isn't easy. I had to climb six flights of stairs to get to my room. It had a tiny stove and there wasn't much to eat. In the winter, it was so cold that water would freeze in the basin. I'd have to sleep under all my clothes. I know it sounds hard, but it was worth it to be able to study what I wanted. These were some of the best years of my life. Look, easy, but still the best years, no complaining. The Sorbonne School of Science had 2,000 students, only 23 were women, only two were studying science. I was so nervous during my first exam, I could barely read it. But when the professor announced our scores, Marie Curie is first in her class. In 1893, I got my degree in physics. A year later, I got a second degree in mathematics. And soon after, I got married to a scientist, of course. This is my husband, Pierre. They had a daughter, and her dad even helped with the babysitting, as he should. Back then, people thought that men were supposed to get jobs and women were supposed to stay home again. I had my own ideas. The only thing you're supposed to do is chase what you love. Ta-da! I built this lab myself. Cool! Wow! This was my next lab, a crowded, damp storeroom. I started studying a chemical element named uranium. According to my instruments, it would give off certain rays, and these rays are filled with energy that we can study and use. I made up a new term for it, radioactivity. I, okay, this is... I asked for a radioactive piece of radium. This is not, these are infinity stones. This is not even right, please. Okay, you're fired too. Okay. My husband found my research so exciting he put aside his own work to join me. Together we discovered two brand new elements, polonium and radium. Those ideas based on my research changed the way the world looked at atoms and radioactivity. In 1903, I was nominated along with my husband and other scientists for the Nobel Prize in Physics, one of the most prestigious awards in science. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. And at first they incorrectly said it was just two men who did the work, but it wasn't. Her husband wouldn't accept the prize until they told the truth and gave Marie credit. Because she was a woman though, they wouldn't let her address the audience. Eventually I became the first woman professor at the Sorbonne. Then my lab became the top place in the world for studying radium and measuring radioactivity. From there, I won a second Nobel Prize by myself, this time in chemistry. I was the first person to ever win Nobel Prizes in two fields, man or woman. Then I invented mobile x-rays to help treat soldiers during World War I. And this is her daughter, Irene, who wanted to be a scientist also. She used to come with me. She's an inspiration, she would say about her mom. In the United States, I even got invited to the White House where President Harding presented me with one gram of radium in a locked box. Okay, really? This is, these are... I want real radium, not infinity stones. It was worth more than $100,000, a gift from the women in America who collected money so I could continue my groundbreaking work. This is her at the White House. She is such an inspiration. And here's the good part. In my life, I was told that only boys could be educated, only boys should study science, and only boys would win awards. I had other ideas. Don't let anyone limit what you can achieve. It's easy to follow the crowd and do what's been done before. But to forge your own path, you have to be daring. You have to risk failure. That's how you learn. Education is like a magic key. It unlocks knowledge. And with that knowledge, you have power. Today, Marie Curie's findings on radiation are an important part of how doctors treat people with cancer. After she won her second Nobel Prize, no other woman won again for 24 years until her daughter won it. And in 1995, they moved her remains to the French Pantheon, the first woman recognized there for her accomplishments. But there's still a sign that says, to the great men, 
from a grateful country. She's on the face of the French money, the 500 franc note, and she says, today there are many amazing women scientists and there can be even more. Join us. Your experiments and ideas can help change the world. Science taught me to ask questions, experiment, fail, try again, and then try some more. You won't always find the answers you expect, and that's okay. You will find new information, new questions, new possibilities. I am Marie Curie. I know the power of discovery. And as always, we end on the back with our moral lesson, right? Our books are here to design and help your kids learn lessons of creativity and kindness, compassion, persistence. And in this one, it says, I am Marie Curie. I know the power of discovery. Always the hero on the front book, the moral lesson on the back. And that is I am Marie Curie. Thank you for letting us entertain you and read to your kids today. Thank you to everyone who keeps sharing these videos. Um, we'll do a couple quick questions that are very important. I know people have been sending us questions um, and I'll go from here. What is my favorite, first question, what is my favorite Xavier Riddle episode? Ooh, that's a good one, we haven't asked that. Oh, my favorite episode. So I love the very first episode we did was I Am Albert Einstein. It hasn't even aired yet. That was the first one we tried. And I'm gonna tell this is a true story. When, when we did the first episode, we actually asked people, um, we watched through a, uh, a one-way mirror, so you can't see we're watching. And we watched little kids watch the show. And they brought in this little girl who was this adorable little girl. She came in and they said, what do you think of the show? Do you like it a lot, a little, or not at all? And this little girl watched the first episode of Xavier Riddle. She said, not at all. And we're like, why? And, she's, and we thought we were horrified because we're like, everyone loves the show. What is she saying? And she goes, well, we asked her why. She said, the shows that I like have ponies and there are no ponies in this episode. And I really like ponies and my ponies have rainbows for tails and there's no rainbows on these ponies. And she had just been promised My Little Pony and we did not have My Little Pony. So um, my favorite episode is always gonna be I Am Albert Einstein because we always say it's the episode with the least amount of ponies. Thanks to that little girl. Um, okay, another question. Um, this is a good question. It's a, oh, I never answered the question though. Which is my favorite? I like I Am Albert Einstein, which I did answer. But let me tell you the other ones that I really love. I love I Am Helen Keller, the Xavier Riddle episode from Helen Keller. I love Amelia Earhart. Um, the Jackie Robinson episode, the Lou Gehrig episode makes me cry every time I see it because it reminds me of my dad. So those are the other episodes I really love. Um, how many books are there? Oh, this is good. This is clearly written by a relative um, who wants me to talk about the book. So yes, these books you see behind you, we have 19 of them, number 20. I Am Leonardo da Vinci is coming out. Um, actually, maybe by the time you see this or soon, it's coming out in April. So 20 books in total. That's a lot of story time for you guys. Um, other questions. It says, who is coming up? Everyone keeps wanting to know who's coming up on Xavier Riddle. Um, okay, I'll tell you. Uh, after Leonardo da Vinci and the books, we do Benjamin Franklin, and then we do Anne Frank. It's a very important book, a really special book. And Xavier Riddle, um, we actually did do Marie Curie, as you saw. Who's coming up that I can tell you about that you don't know about yet? I'm trying to remember. I'm not supposed to say anything. I'm not supposed to tell you that we're doing... Um, Billie Jean King, we're not supposed to say that or anything else, so I didn't just say that. You didn't hear that from me. Um, but everyone's on our list. If you have heroes that you wanna see, write to me. Go to our website, go to bradmilks.com, hit the email us button, go to ordinarypeoplechangetheworld.com. Please, please go, tell us who you wanna see. Um, I love picking out really great heroes from there. Um, other questions, which is, um, what else do Xavier's antennas do? That's an interesting question. Okay, Xavier does have, if you see them, he has, um, he has, on his hoodie, he has antennas. Right. And he can take the dial on the side and he can use it as a translator. Now, can it do anything else is the question. Um, yes. And I think you're gonna see. Okay, last question for today um, is, who invented the secret museum? Ah, that is a good question. Okay, this is someone who clearly saw the Xavier Riddle in the secret movie. If you watch Xavier Riddle, our first ever movie, which you can watch on the PBS Kids app, um, you will see who built the museum. You may also see who built the secret museum. It's a really, really cool answer. I'm not gonna ruin it for you. If you watch it, you're really gonna enjoy it. Um, okay, wait, one last question, just because we have it. Um, why don't you do any voices on the show? Oh, voices on the show. Okay, so I do not do the voices on the show because we every voice that you hear on the show, all the heroes, Xavier, Yadina, and Brad, um, and Marie Curie, who you saw and heard, they are all done by kids. They're all real kids. And we try and get kids that are, you know, when we did Sacagawea, we get a Native American kid. Um, when we get um, 
someone who is, I don't want to ruin it, I'm going to ruin it, who we're going to get. But we have like, when we have someone who's British, we get a British kid. When we have someone who's African American, we get an African American kid. We really try always um, to find someone who can authentically be that hero when they were a little kid. And so it's always kids, you don't want me voicing because I'm not a good actor, just look at me. I'm a reader is what I am. So with that said, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for always reading with us. Keep reading, keep reading, and most important, keep being nice to each other. I'm Brad Meltzer. Thanks for joining us for I Am Marie Curie.